In this week, we're going to look at how to position layers in 3D space. Before we do that, we need to talk a little bit about the quirkiness of 3D layers. You see, as we talked about in the last movie, you convert a 2D layer to a 3D object by clicking this little cube. But once you do, it becomes a completely different entity. A 3D layer has different rules than a 2D layer does. For example, if I select the rock logo layer, hit P for position, and I play with the Z position, and I take this back and back and back, I'm not scaling this down, remember, I'm just making this go farther and farther away from the view. No matter how far I take it back, it can't go behind the stars or this background diamond layer because that's the way the layer positions are set up. However, if I take this back down to zero, resetting everything, if I make these other layers 3D as well, then as I move this farther away, then I can go behind or in front of other objects, even though they are behind it or beneath it in the layer stack. So 3D layers are allowed to defy the layer order. Now here's another quirky rule. 2D layers cannot participate in this process. So 3D layers that are on top can never go behind 2D layers. So if you want objects like the background here, for example, to be constant while you're rotating the logo in 3D space, then just make sure the background layers are 2D. So the way that this works, it's almost like 2D layers are a wall that prevent 3D layers from interacting and overlapping one another. So let's say, for example, I take this logo in Z space behind the diamond again. If I were to click this little cube to convert these 3D layers, the stars, back to the 2D layer, then it would make it so that the rock layer cannot go behind the diamond. Because again, these 2D layers act as a wall, and they will not allow these 3D layers, the rock and the diamond, to go back and forth and defy the layer stack. Now let's talk about positioning layers. Most of the magic in that department takes place in these two dropdowns at the bottom of the composition panel. This one on the left tells you which view you're looking at. And when you're just playing with 2D layers, there really isn't a point to use this. But when you're dealing with 3D, we can change the view to the left view or to the top view. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make all these layers 3D again. And if I have the rock logo selected, I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see that I have this little control. And I know you can't really see anything right here. But what this is, is basically a representation, again, of a top-down view of our layers. So this little stack here in the center represents all of the layers. You see, when you first convert layers from 2D to 3D, they all start out by default at the same Z space, or in other words, the same Z position. So when you have a top-down view, it appears like they're just flat. The rock logo is this one right here. So even though we're moving it down, this is in the top view. So we're actually moving it closer to the viewer or farther away. So the top view is what I like to use, especially at first when I'm positioning layers in 3D space. Now, if it helps, you could also go down to this drop down right here and change the view from one view to four views. Then you can see four views simultaneously. If I click on one of these views, it becomes highlighted and we get these little orange triangles in the corners. And the drop down right here changes to indicate which view you're looking at. So this view is from the right. In other words, from the right side of the composition. We have the front, we have the top view, and we also have another top view. We don't need two top views. So with this one selected, I'm going to change this to active camera. And so now when I come over here to my top view, and let's say I click on the rock logo, for example, and I move it in Z space by dragging this blue arrow, you can see in real time what it's doing here in the active camera view. So I might want to move that forward a little bit more. And then I can select the right star and then shift click the left star so they're both selected. Click the blue arrow of one of them and they will both move. You can see what result that has in the active camera view. And then we can move the background diamond layer a little bit more forward also there. And folks, this is really where you make magic out of the 3D and After Effects. Again, these layers are just flat layers, but the way that we make them look 3D and feel 3D is by staggering them in 3D space along the Z axis. So now that we have these layers staggered in 3D space, let's talk about how to see the magic by creating cameras. We'll do that in the next movie, as well as talk about lights.